Okay, so, <clears throat> hey guys, good morning. We are still on the way to uh, to Vegas, to Pahrump, Nevada actually, through Vegas, hop in there. Had a crazy, crazy, crazy night last night. So everything was going good. We were making good time. We were going to come in to Pahrump late, set up down there at, at the new camp down there. Got everything dialed in in terms of the sheriff was out there harassing people about the land they were using. So we got some permission from another nearby landowner with even better land. We pull in and then it gets late. We stop for dinner and Kelly's transmission, Kelly Stewart, her family's traveling with us and her transmission starts acting up and it, it, it starts weirding out. And it's this, uh, this GMC Yukon and apparently the transmissions they use in those are somewhat <clears throat> notorious. It's like a six series transmission. So... So we're like, I, I mess with it, I check the fluids, you know, we're thinking, okay, maybe we can get it going. It's not going. So we stop, we're like, okay, we're just going to stop for the night. We're going to go out here and park, and then we'll just figure this out in the morning, okay? Because it's like, I don't know, 1030 at night already, right? We pull in. I've never seen anything like this. It's like one thing after another. So we pull in, her transmission's failing, and, and we pull into this area here, and, and, uh, we come in, and I'm kind of backing up and jockeying around. I jackknife the trailer a little bit, and all of a sudden, I just snap, right? And I thought I just jackknifed it a little too far. And I come back, and the trailer is sitting on the ground. And I've lifted it up a little now so I can level it off. But, I mean, check this out. The hitch, literally, the welds just sheared off on this. Now, we weren't in an accident, nothing. I'm just, like, backing up, moving around. And the trailer is on the ground. It's sitting on the ground on top of this. I mean, you can see here where it kind of gouged in. The whole thing, like the, the, the ball, the, 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 the rapid hitch is still on the receiver. The actual receiver on the truck sheared off the welds. It's all just bent down. The whole thing, it just, it just flat fell off. Um, now, I've never seen anything like this on a hitch. Maybe you guys have. I'm looking at this and I'm like, holy cow, this is the stock hitch. It's rated for, you know, seven, 8,000 pounds. And uh, it just fell off. So <laughs> it's uh, interesting. And I'm, I'm a little disturbed by like, you know, look at the little welds on this. There ain't much holding this thing on there. That's what I've been relying on all this time. Because this truck is rated for like, they rate these these trucks I think for like 10 or 12,000 but the hitch is not that heavy duty but we've been fine with this for a long time it hasn't been a problem until it just flat sheared off so anyways that was interesting and uh, a little scary so don't assume right don't assume I never thought much of it because I have this truck I looked up the towing capacity uh, this is an 01 GMC Sierra 2500, and I forget exactly what the towing capacity is, but it was well above, it was above my, uh, my trailer, and I'm like, okay, and it's always towed fine. And so they rate these vehicles, they, they rate these vehicles for a certain tow capacity, I guess, but looking on the hitch, I don't even think the towing capacity, the weight carrying capacity of this hitch is the same as the truck is rated. And, but the fact is, like, yeah. Like Shelly said, I've never seen this something do this before. And I mean, I could see this if I was in a car accident or something like that. But, you know, I just jackknifed it a little bit It is when it happened. But I've jackknifed the thing lots of times. It's a trailer, right? And so, I mean, I just want to get you a look at this. Something to be aware of. Look how little on your GMC truck. Look how little those welds are. There's no bolt going through from this upper area down into, into here. And, you know, maybe design-wise that couldn't happen. But... But it's not very sturdy. There's not much weld there. And that thing just flat broke off. I walked back here and my jaw about hit the floor. I'm like, I'm like, well, <laughs> it's a good thing we weren't doing 70 down the highway when that thing sheared off. That would have been that would have been an interesting ride. So, anyways, we're still moving. I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna find a new hitch for this thing. I think it's a bolt-on. I'm gonna make sure to get one that's heavy duty enough. And it's uh, it's crazy, yeah. God always takes care of us and protects us. You know, it's like people ask me, guys. Pe people ask me, Gavin, how do you decide where to camp? And I'm like, well, we pretty much pull in, and when the trailer falls off, we're like, hey, this is good. <laughs> so we just stayed here. The trailer 
It's pretty much here until I go get this fixed. I'm probably going to run down into Vegas and find a hitch today. Fortunately, it's not a Sunday, um, and I'll just probably have to come bolt it on. But uh, we're just kind of out in the sticks here, and we will figure it out. And I think John Lamb's going to gonna come up, and uh, we'll, we'll straighten out what's what, get, uh, get Kelly's rig in order, and... We'll see what happens. Yeah, I suppose it could be welded up. Well, no, I mean the metal's all bent now. It'll be a lot easier just to uh, just to uh, replace the whole hitch because it's a bolt-on receiver hitch. But we'll get it figured out. Um, if you have any tips for replacing a hitch on a GMC, let me know. But it looks to me like it just bolts off. If I go find another one, I'm gonna get a one that's 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 overrated this time. Uh, you know, maybe maybe I wasn't judicious enough in in just checking to make sure this hitch was enough for the trailer, but this truck was certainly rated high enough. But frankly, um, even in an overloaded hitch, I've never seen anything <laughs> like that. Pour coke on it for the rust. <laughs> uh, so yeah, but you know, it, it's funny because it like broke. We weren't even driving; we're just sitting there, and I'm backing up a little bit, and all of a sudden, pop! And I go, and I'm like, oh, the trailer's on the ground. That's interesting. How did that happen? Very, very unique experience. Not something you want to have happen going down the interstate. So I guess that's just a reminder to check all your trailer hitches. And uh, and I never assume, you know, I would I would always check my ball, make sure nothing was cracking. You know, I'm I'm a pretty pretty judicious on my maintenance, but I never really thought to worry about the trailer hitch itself shearing off. You know, and yeah, I think I want to get a class four. I'm guessing they only put a class three on this stock, and definitely gonna get a. Uh, get a class four or something so we have a little bit of overbuild and we will see what happens so yeah I wouldn't want to be moving with that but but thank God he takes care of us it broke in a spot where we could camp and uh, we will uh, we'll get this fixed up and we will see you guys we'll see you guys down there at the March on Nevada Southern head on down there I got kids I got to go deal with here got to get Kelly organized with her rig and uh, and yeah, so no, the ball was definitely not the wrong size. The hitch, it's weird though, the hitch didn't, let me show you, the hitch did not drop out. Um, the ball, the whole thing literally broke off and fell down. So the hitch was actually still sitting on top of the ball right here. The chains were like all stretched out. I had to do some wrangling just to get everything loose because it was basically all just jammed up in there. The hitch was sitting right here. Uh, the ball is, is uh, has, this ball has been, been good. Have never had any problems with that ball. And just to be clear, the, the ball, that rapid hitch, did not break. Nothing's broken on that. The receiver of the truck itself simply ripped off the back of the truck. And that's something, that's a different experience for me. But right, when you're traveling, part of the adventure is like, okay, how prepared, organized, and, and efficient can we be in getting fixed and being back on the road? So rather than complain about it, you're like, let's get this done. And then you feel satisfied for getting it done. Uh, yeah, watching out for rattlesnakes and stormtroopers down here, and those stormtroopers we're watching out for are usually members of the Blue Line. They're like the uh, the thugs that guard Nevada Southern Prison and their crony Nye County sheriffs that are running around intimidating and trying to threaten people like Kelly and other, other marchers down there who are peaceful, standing up against prison torture and abuse and for the rule of law, while the Nye County Sheriff and her undersheriff and their deputies refuse to do their job, and in fact, are, the, are out here intimidating and trying to make it out like we're the non-peaceful ones, we're the violent ones. But that's not true. We are peace. We're here to stand up. It's time to set the prisoners free. It's time to restore people's rights. And if any violence occurs, it's them that are the instigators. They're down there with their guns marching around and acting like terrorists. And we're saying we want to love our neighbor. We want there to be freedom. We want to do what's right. So we're actually only a few miles, a few hours out from, from the march, and uh, we just got to get everything wrangled, and hopefully we can be down there today. We'll see how things go. I'm going to get going here, uh, make some phone calls, try and figure out what I need, and uh, we'll see you guys soon. We'll see you soon.